There's nothing quite as frustrating as starting a mission after a few hours of outlawing, do-gooding, and roaming the wacky wild west, only to be blocked by some jacked-up difficulty that comes seemingly out of nowhere. Here are some of the toughest missions in Red Dead Redemption 2. While traveling between Camp and Valentine in the early parts of the game, you might run across a gruesome scene under a small train bridge. In the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, a deranged and merciless killer lurks in the shadows, taking innocent lives and leaving mangled bodies behind. And based on the nearby messages, he obviously wants somebody to find them. Uh, three, I do. Ooh. Yeah. Poor bastard. Examining the victim's severed head yields one-third of a map, implying there are two other parts to find at two other bloody locations. Collecting all three creates a map leading to the serial killer's hideout and a morbidly delightful encounter. Do you like pain? Is it your friend? This mission, called American Dreams, has one flaw that makes it harder than, say, just stumbling onto this psycho's den of death like a Wild West Inspector Clouseau, and that's finding the pieces of his map. None of the crime scenes leave hints pointing to the other ones. Arthur has to stumble upon three bloody aftermaths by pure dumb luck. And considering how large the world is, it's easy to miss the mission entirely. While the other missions in this list might be hard to finish, this one dares to be the one that's hard to even start. Throughout Red Dead Redemption 2, Arthur encounters his former lover, Mary Linton. Their relationship has pretty much fizzled out, and his gunslinging outlaw lifestyle is partly to blame. Watching your boyfriend reduce O'Driscoll's to a pulpy human stew isn't exactly an aphrodisiac after all. That said, she's not above using his particular skill set to her advantage when need be. But that's a bitter rant for another day. Listen, Arthur, I... I'm... My family... I need your help. Anyway, Mary serves to flesh out Arthur's character arc later in the game, beginning with We Loved Once and True. You can turn down the quest, but where's the fun or romance in that? Mary's brother Jamie has been taken by the Shalonians, a cult of religious fanatics obsessed with turtles. I like turtles. All right. It's up to Arthur to liberate the impressionable youngster from these kooky zealots forcibly if necessary. No matter how you convince the cult leader to step aside, Jamie always flees on horseback. Not only does he move quickly, he takes you down a path full of oh-so-convenient obstacles. Think Han Solo speeding through the asteroid field, but you're one of the sad saps in the TIE Fighters. The final leg of the mission proves tricky if you're not careful. After catching up to Jamie, Arthur pleads with the boy, asking him to go back to Mary. Jamie instead threatens to shoot himself in the head with a revolver. Now Arthur has to use a draw mechanic to shoot the gun out of the boy's hand. Kid, just... Calm down. Leave me alone! Yeah, this moment leaves little room for error, making it one of the more delicate segments early in the game. If only Jamie had a shell of safety now. Shell of safety. 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 <clears throat> Shall have safety. It's almost as if Micah Bell does everything in his power to make the player hate every fiber of his being. And dang, does he succeed with flying colors. Go fetch me something to eat. Excuse me? I said, fetch me something to eat. <laughs> His debaucherous odyssey begins in Blessed Are the Meek, which infamously leads to the slaughter of Strawberry, a sizable bounty on your head, and, uh, a second holster? Hey, grab hold of that silver lining and squeeze. Eventually, and against the better judgment of those on our second playthroughs, Arthur goes on a solo mission to break Micah out of jail. After Arthur rips the walls off the prison, Micah shoots his cellmate. He runs into town and guns officers down, all while Arthur tries to leave quickly. Instead, he reluctantly joins Micah's bloody crusade, all for a couple of freaking guns. They had something of mine. My guns. I showed him. Micah himself is the biggest threat to the mission. To succeed, Micah needs to stay alive. That's not easy when he consistently rushes ahead of Arthur. Or because the only good Micah is a dead Micah. It really is classic Rockstar game design. The mustachioed imbecile flails about in the face of your enemies like a wacky, waving, inflatable arm flailing tube man with a bullseye stapled to his face. And you guessed it, when he bites it, so does the mission. Oh well, at least you get to watch Micah shuffle off this mortal coil again and again. That never gets old. For a cowboy with a lot of blood on his hands and a freaking death sentence to deal with, Arthur does some pretty absurd and time-consuming odd jobs. 
One of the weird omissions comes from Deborah McGuinness, the self-proclaimed leading amateur paleontologist in the nation. I am the leading amateur paleontologist in the nation, and not one university will hire me because unlike them, I actually have ideas. She starts the mission a test of faith. She wants to find all the dinosaur bones in the area. So she does what any sensible person would. She hires a cowboy with literally zero applicable skills. The book passes on to Arthur, who now has to scour the land for 30 well-hidden dinosaur bones. The tuberculosis can wait! If you played Red Dead Redemption 2, you know most missions hold your hand at every juncture. At the very least, a search radius pops up on the minimap, giving you an idea of where to mose. But the game gives neither a quest marker nor a verbal hint as to the fossil's whereabouts, so you're relying on your own observations of the landscape around you, or, you know, a walkthrough. Don't worry, we won't tell. Oh, this is the happiest day since... Well, since my sister died! So we can all agree, Arthur Morgan leads a pretty eclectic life. He hunts vampires, he dabbles with the latest technology, and he meets some pretty strange people during his travels. He mingles with a French artist, a possible time traveler, and an amputated Civil War veteran. Sometimes all within a single day. One of these friends is the appropriately named Jeremy Gill a famous fisherman. Jeremy wants to make wall-mounted trophies out of the 13 legendary fish in the area. And who better to catch them than a gruff amateur fisherman? This kicks off the mission A Fisher of Fish. You, sir, are fish. For the most part, catching the fish is pretty easy, but one of them can give you a lot of trouble, especially with the law. The legendary bullheaded catfish lives in a river delta in the western part of Sisica Penitentiary. To reach the island, you need to get lucky and find a nice boat off the west coast of the mainland. Then you position yourself and cast a line, but keep in mind that you're in illegal waters at this point. If a guard so much as sees you, you're a wanted man. Believe it or not, fishing gets hard when you're being hunted by the popo. This is Murphy Hills, mister. Folks get lost up in these parts, they don't come back. You get my meaning? Toward the last chapter of the game, the gang needs to move camp one last time before the ending tears everyone apart. In that Murphy country, Arthur and Charles Smith scout out a place called Beaver Hollow to see if it's suitable for their needs. Everything checks out except for one teensy little snag. An inbred family of crazies called the Murphy Brood call the cave home. Arthur and Charles do what any sensible outlaw would do. Diplomacy? Nah, not with these folk. The Murphy Brood only understands one language, murder. You can choose to go in stealthily with arrows and knives, but helping the Murphys go out with a dynamite bang is also an option. Regardless of your choice, the fight ends loudly, and you'll rely on your guns. The savage hillbillies go with a more Braveheart-inspired solution, charging at Arthur and Charles with machetes in hand. Unfortunately, when a Murphy catches you, he'll stab you with a machete, potentially killing you in one hit. The same goes for Charles, whose death also leads to a game over. So sling some lead accurately and quickly before one of these loonies introduces you to the Grim Reaper via a well-placed machete. Red Dead Redemption 2 wouldn't be a modern rockstar game without a little bit of torture, and Arthur goes through his fair share of it. In Blessed Other Peacemakers, our favorite cowboy takes one of the worst beatings he or any other rockstar anti-hero has ever received. Well, maybe not the worst. Let it out, you're turning red. This is what I was talking about, can't you see how blocked he is? The mission starts as Micah, Dutch, and Arthur ride to a neutral location to meet Como Driscoll the leader of a rival outlaw gang. On the surface, both parties seem interested in peace. In truth, however, Arthur and his sniper rifle acted as Dutch's insurance in case the meeting went south. After posting up on a cliff overlooking the meeting, you wait around for a bit while watching the tense negotiations. Then you get captured and taken hostage, becoming bait for Dutch and the gang. Arthur's new scars paint a ruthless picture of Combe who clearly isn't afraid to bring his captive close to death. When the game puts control in your hands, you're tasked with guiding a broken, beaten Arthur to freedom. It's a harrowing, humbling reminder that even the most rough-and-tumble cowboy isn't quite bulletproof. You are safe now, Arthur. You're safe now. That's pretty, does. That's real pretty. But fear not, Comb gets his just desserts. Karma, as they say, is a B-word. Arthur Morgan likes his nicotine. The unhealthy addiction becomes more apparent when he finds a man named Phineas T. Ramsbottom and triggers the smoking and other hobbies mission. Hmm. Do you smoke, sir? Sure, but perhaps not as much as you. 
Ramsbottom's name sounds like it belongs in a Harry Potter adult parody, and his mission is just as much a pain in the butt. He starts one of the worst missions in Red Dead Redemption 2. You see, he collects cigarette trading cards, and he's willing to pay a pretty penny for complete sets. There are 12 sets with 12 cards apiece. In other words, 144 cards await you in the vast wilderness. The cards like to hide inside buildings, so you might find them along the myriad quests throughout the game. However, you likely won't finish even one set unless you go out of your way to do so. The only alternative way to complete this undertaking is to open a bunch of premium cigarettes, which cost $2.50 per pack at the general store. If you luck out and get all 144 without any duplicates, it costs you $360, but anyone with an addiction to collectible card games knows no one is that lucky. Even then, this process requires patience, perseverance, and a whole lot of sucking down ash. Plus, Arthur can only hold a handful of packs in his satchel at a time. Turning in all 12 sets nets you $1,000 and an assortment of small rewards, but it's hard to justify the time and effort. I'm dying for a cigarette. <laughs> Let's jump forward into Red Dead Redemption 2's epilogue, where you play as our old friend John Marston. The mission, a quick favor for an old friend, wins the award for most misleading mission title, considering how many hoops you have to jump through. It all starts with Uncle, who recommends building a barn for John's newly acquired ranch. Barn will take three of us six months to build. Oh, you don't build a barn, dumbass! What do you think this is, 1785? You buy one pre-cut. However, John's short on cash, and the bank shows little interest in extending his line of credit. With serendipitous timing, everybody's scary crush Sadie Adler approaches with another bounty mission and asks John for help. The duo chases down Ramon Cortez, and long story short, the culprit almost escapes twice before being brought to justice. The real frustrating part of the hunt starts after his first escape. He's gone! He's gone! Uh, well... We brought him in. Now, pay us what's owed. He ain't here now, madam. Our bounty hunters track him down to a small ravine, where Sadie asks John to cover her from afar with a sniper rifle. Almost immediately after the gunfire begins, she insists that her sniper join the front lines. You now have to sprint to Sadie, who's at risk of dying and ending the mission. She's under fire at the bottom of a ravine while Del Lobo's gang members rain lead down on her, and you're about to join her in that crappy situation. Despite pushing through a downhill ravine, this mission is an uphill battle, forcing you to run through a small army with a large tactical advantage. Hey, if it means spending time with the real love of our life, Sadie, count us in. Abigail? Who's Abigail? Hey, it's an innocent question. Stop it! What is this? You're defensive, you know that? Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.